Hello my convicts and convict catchers, so it is I like a convict bringing you guys and gals another video. So here we are doing another tech video. So let's get to it, shall we? So here we go. So this video is about Ethernet adapter settings, what adapter settings you should change and what you really should be using. So without further ado, talk about it and see if we can improve your internet connection your ethernet adapter now what is an ethernet adapter the ethernet adapter basically is a built-in modem that's built to your motherboard in the back of your pc and often they are set as a generic standard layout of what they should be doing and not always is this going to be beneficial depending on what you're doing especially if you're like me and you use it for gaming i've always done a lot of videos regarding netduma and other pc stuff so i really want to kind of talk about this and give you an explanation of how it works because I've seen many YouTube videos out there but they don't really explain what these actually do they just say oh do this do this do this do this and there you go and for all you know it could probably not be the best thing for you there is some documentation I'm going to link in the description below for you as well uh, to help you out with this so you can make your own decision if you want to change anything that I'm going to show you today First of all, go here to the network. You want to right click, go to open network and internet settings. You want to bring this up and go down to change adapter options. And this will bring you obviously your ethernets that are currently available. This one is for Kaspersky. And this one is the current one I'm using. As you can see here, this one has a red X, which means that it's not available. There's nothing plugged in or it's not connected to this uh, ethernet connection. You want to go to the ethernet that is connected you may have a third or fourth one if you've got wi-fi i use ethernet only i don't like to use wi-fi and this pc does not have a wi-fi connection but yeah so left click right click good properties and what you want to do then is copy this information here and then what you want to do is now go to a browser of choice and let me just delete this two moments and then Control and paste, which as you can see, I've already done that. I've had to record this a couple of times now. And press enter, and then go to obviously where it is. Mine's here at the top. I will link this one in the description as well as the real tech one as well. Then go to downloads. Then what you want to do is go here to where it says all, and you want to go to whatever your Windows version is, or if you're on Mac or anything like that, that would probably be OS independent. You can go for OS independent, which will download. The versions for all the different windows i'm not going to do that right here in this video excuse me while i cough i'm going to choose windows 10 then you want to follow here as you can see the network adapter for windows 10 and view details and then you want to choose what version your windows is on you can do this by going into the bottom here typing system information clicking and it will actually tell you what version you're on if it's 32 or 64. i'm not going to do it because it does give other information i don't want you to see then once you've downloaded this it will then be a zip file which you just need to extract and then just follow the prompts on there which is pretty easy to do i'll show you quickly on here so you click on it accept it will then download up here if you do the OS independent, it will take a long, a much longer time because it's a much, much bigger file. It's going to download for all Windows and Mac versions. So then once you've done that, you've got the wired driver. You want to go to where it is in the folder. You want to then go and you want to extract. You want to extract this. When you extract it, I'll put it here. I'll open up and then you just want to go and double click on this and then follow the prompts. I'm not going to do it myself, but just double click on this and then follow the prompts. Once you've done that, what that will basically do is it will update your internet drivers. It may say at the end of the prompt that you need to uh, restart computer. Just put no for now because you will be restarting once you've done the last bit of what we're doing here. Um, so I don't recommend doing it now. Just put no for now. Just like update and just put uh, update uh, 
restart later or some whatever it, it asks you that will recommend to restart later on there once you've done that obviously come back to this part what we're going to do now is click on internet protocol version 4 tcp slash ipv4 you want to then go to configure it may bring up a prompt just put yes then you can go now to the next bit so first of all what you want to do is go to power management you want to make sure that these are unticked you don't want them ticked because this will turn off the device and obviously you don't want to be doing that to say power then you want to go to advanced now these options here i'm going to go through if you want to follow me you can do so but i'm going to link some information regarding what these are in the description because these are the things where people have kind of said oh yeah you just do this you do this do this do this do this but yet they don't explain what they are and what effect they may have on your pc now i've been looking and thinking well i don't know what these are what is enable pme what is arp offload i don't know what these are and i'm okay following someone's guide and they don't know and they've followed the guide from someone else or for, from someone else of someone else of someone else because you don't know what you're changing what i've done here is i've actually gone and found out the information and i've actually gone and had a look around and i found this information here that you can do uh they can look into as you can see here this one's for the one for intel and it tells you exactly what it is like the gigabit master slave it decides whether the adapter or link partner is designated as a master the other device is designated as a slave changing this setting can improve link quality with certain link partners so by putting this as master for the gigabit master slave mode it can improve link quality with certain link partners obviously you would have to double check and see you know try it out and see how it works for you and if there's any problems obviously obviously change it back but it gives you information about what it is and what it could potentially do like here this says enables uh, which is jumbo frames or jumbo packets as it's referred to which is what it's referred to if you go to the one that i've got here Where's it gone? Go back to it. IPv4. Yes. Advance. If you go to the jumbo packet, you see I've got a jumbo packet here, but I've got it as disabled. I will go through all these in just a moment, but I just want to give you a quick demonstration. And it says here enables or disables jumbo frame capacity. If large packets make up the majority of traffic and more latency can be tolerated. Jumbo frames can reduce can reduce CPU utilization and improve wire efficiency. Jumbo frames are larger than standard Ethernet frames, which are 1.5k in size. And then obviously you can choose whether or not to use this or not. And using jumbo frames 10 to 100 can result in poor performance or a loss of link. So it can be used to help it can also like it said there you can end up with poor performance or a loss of a link if obviously you're using 10 or 100 megabits and there's lots of information on here that you can read i'm not going to go through it all but just giving you a quick demonstration i will link that in the description below but what i'm going to do now is talk you through each one of these and what i've got it set to and then if you want to follow along you can do obviously i've read the information there you can follow it or you can go and make your own decision so arp offload i've got it as disabled enable pme is disabled eee as it's called energy efficient ethernet you want this off if you can turn it off if not put it as disabled whatever whatever is the value for off for all that flow control disabled gigabit master slave mode as i've just read i put that as false master mode for this connection interrupt moderation disabled interrupt moderation rate turn this off ipv for checksum offload turn that off jumbo packet is currently disabled even though it did say to put it on there but again with the loss of link 
I just want to make sure it's on disabled. I may try it the other way one time and see how we get on, but for now it's disabled. Large send offload is disabled. Large send offload for both IPv4 and 6 is off or disabled. Locally administered addresses is for virtual computers, so you want this to be not present left as what it is. Log link state event, I've got that as disabled. Maximum number of RSS queries, I've got this set to one. The apparently is four, but apparently this will affect memory on your PC. So you'd be using more memory. The higher the queues, the more memory you are using from your RAM. So just be aware. I've left it at one queue. NSF NS offload, I've got it's disabled. Packet Packet priority and VLAN. I've got this as disabled. ETP hardware timestamp. Uh, I've got this disabled. Receive buffers. I had this value changed to 1024. I used to actually have it as 2048, same as the transmit buffers that someone else suggested. But apparently, from the documentation again, which is going to be in the description, it said and stated that your receive buffers could be double less then your transmit buffers. So your transmit buffers should be double the receive buffer. So if you've got 2048, which the maximum is 2048 uh, on Intel or on these ones, I don't think you can go up, uh, above that value. 24, 2048 is a maximum. Then obviously you're supposed to have receive buffers should be double less than that. So I'll put it as 1024. But it's completely up to you. You can do that, or you can leave it at 2048 if you want to try that out as well. Completely up to you. Yeah. So that is 1024 if you're going to follow me. Receive side scaling. I've got it disabled. Reduce speed and power down. Disabled. Software timestamp. Disabled. Speed and duplex. Now, this one is depending on your connection or your wiring. Obviously, mine can do 1 gigabit full duplex. So I've put it as 1 gigabit full duplex. If it can't, or you want to leave it as auto, -negoti auto negotiation, by all means, feel free to do so. That means that your PC will choose for you whether or not it can accept that or not. So um, that choice is up to you. I put mine as what the maximum is. TCP checksum offload for IPv4 and IPv6, these should be disabled. Transmit buffers should be double of your receive buffers, like I said, so that's 2048. These should also be disabled. Anything with offload should always be disabled. Wait for link uh, is off. Wake on link settings disabled. Magic packet disabled. And pattern match is also disabled as well. Make sure power management, these are two, this can, uh, these are unchecked as well because these will obviously interrupt your network connection at uh, whenever it feels like to try and save power. So. I don't recommend them being on. Once you've done that, just click OK. And that is all you need to do. Once you've completed that, there we go. That's it. That's all you need to change on there. Like I said, in the description, I will put more information in regards to Intel. Um, that listing I've just showed you, where it tells you, talks you through it, tells you exactly what it does. And then you can make your own choices from there. Whether or not you wish to follow mine, it's completely up to you. Well, hopefully that helps you out. It's actually been helping me more and more. I've been finding that I've been getting less and less and less packet burst in Caldera. So I definitely feel like it is helping out. There's a couple of other programs out there I want to talk about as well. One being this, which is exit lag, but we'll do that in another video. Hopefully this helps. If it does, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Please come and check out the channel on Twitch as well, which is twitch.tv forward slash capconvict. It'll be in the description below. Again, that's twitch.tv forward slash capconvict. I do live stream Monday to Friday, unless obviously it's holidays and stuff as I look after my boy who is autistic. And yes, unfortunately he is off all of this week. He will, we will be returning to live streaming as from Monday up till around about the 23rd, 25th. I think there'll be a bit of disruption between the 23rd, 25th as Rio's due to have some teeth taken out at hospital. Um, so he's definitely going to be in hospital on the 25th. Um, but yeah, normally Monday to Friday, half past 10 to half past 2, drop a follow on Twitch and uh, 
I'll link that in the description. And by all means, you can come and check out the live streams when I'm actually live. There we go. Hopefully, it helped out. If it did, don't forget like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And it is I, the Cup Convict, signing out. As always, I salute you, my convicts and convicts, and I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.